glad to be back. I'm glad to be back after just about a month out and <laughs> a wild ride, so it's good to be back with my with my family. Thank you guys for all of your prayers and support um, during this time for our family because uh, I just can't even go. I could, I could actually give you a sermon on all the things going on, but <laughs> I will not. Um, <laughs> what I will do is start us off with our call to worship, which has been really a verse for me, um, especially over the last week, some crazy things happening. Um, it's just been one that I've been claiming. Um, so since I get to choose it, this is what I chose. Um, Isaiah 43, 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Claim that because it's real. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And I invite, invite anybody who cares to stand, to stand and join us in song. You also may sit and join us in song. Just join us in song and in worship. Take me past the outer courts Into the holy place Past the brazen altar Lord, I want to see your face Pass me by the crowds of people And the priests who sing your praise I hunger and thirst for your righteousness But it's only found in one place Take me in to the holy Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me in to the holy of holies. Take the cold, touch my lips, here I am. Take me past the outer courts to this holy place. Past the brazen altar Lord, I want to see your face Pass me by the crowds of people And the priests who sing your praise I hunger and thirst for your righteousness But it's only found in one place Take me in to the holy of holies Take me in, take me in by the blood Take me in to the holy of holies. Take the cold, touch my lips, here I am. Take me in to the holy of holies. Take me in by my of the Touch my lips, here I am Take the cold, touch my lips, here I am that gift of ripping up the that veil that was the one thing that was separating us from God and uh, the last gift that Jesus gave us before he laid down his life or as he laid down his life was the gift of the Holy Spirit that we were able to we were able to communicate directly with God and that's what that song is about if you believe that say amen amen, amen. all right we're going to do one for you called Open Up the Heavens. And uh, the kids love this song. They get up and dance to it. I told you. We've waited for this day. We're gathered in your name. Calling out to you. Your glory like a fire. Awakening desire will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. 
presence in this place, your glory on our face, we're looking to the skies, descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now, Lord unveil our eyes, you're the reason we're here, you're the reason we're storm kind of what you've been in actually i've been in the storm this is the eye <laughs> yeah. one thing about being in the eye of the storm there's always a way out god always gives <laughs> us a way out there's always a silver lining behind that black cloud you might not see it right away but give it time it's there you gotta look for it sometimes <laughs> When the solid ground is falling out from underneath my feet Between the black skies and my red eyes I can barely see When I'm feeling like I've been let down by my friends and my family I can hear the rain reminding me In the eye of the storm, you remain in control in the middle of the war, you got my soul. You alone on the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. When my hopes and dreams are far from me and I'm running out of faith, I see the future I pictured slowly fade away. Where the tears of pain and heartaches are pouring down my face, I find my peace in Jesus' name. Yes, I do. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you got my soul. You are alone on the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. Comes 
in And the doctor says Only got a few months left It's like a bitter pill I'm swallowing I can barely take a breath When addiction steals my baby girl And there's nothing that I can do My only hope is to trust in you I trust you, Lord In the eye of the storm You remain in control In the middle of the war You got my soul Or you alone on the anchor When my sails are torn Your love surrounds me In the eye of the storm In the eye of the storm You remain in control in the middle of the war, you got my soul. You are known on the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. Yeah. From the Surfside Church, it's good to have you all here this morning, and i all got the boys and girls already up here, so they're all mine. Let me show you. They're all mine this morning. I brought something to show you today, so you guys, can you come up here so I can show you? Right here. What is it? What do you think? A blankie. A blankie? Mm-hmm. Could be like that. Let's see. Let's unfold it one more time. And one more time. What do you think that is? There is a picture on it, absolutely. What's the pictures? It's a sash. It's, it's a like sash. a sash, yeah. And there's lots of people. Lots of people. What types of people? What, are, what kind of people are on there? Children. Children, you are absolutely right. Are they, do they all look the same? No. Yes. They do? No. No. Which, one, which ones are different from each other? This one, this one, this one. Oh, they are. One. That's a, they are the same. Yeah, the pattern kind of repeats a little bit, doesn't it? This one is the same. This one looks like Do you know what this is? No. Okay, a big word for it is called a stole. It's not that anybody stole it, but it's a stole. It was actually given to me by your grandfather, all right, Papa Ralph. He, my dad, he gave it to me on the day that I was ordained into the Church of God. When they had the big ordination ceremony and everything, when they celebrated it at the church, he gave this to me as a gift. You know what this is for? This is for, for those of us who wear it. Sorry, I didn't mean to make that sound loud. But for those of us who wear it, it is a reminder to us that we're servants. Like Jesus wrapped himself with a towel and served people. It's to remind That's us that we serve. Story. That we serve. But you know what? Sometimes the pe- what happens is, is people think that only the people who wear the stoles like this are the priests, and they're the only people who go out and go do things in the world to tell people about Jesus and tell God's story. But do you know something, what the Bible tells us about? I mean, yeah, I was ordained because I passed all the tests and all those things that happened and all the studying and everything else, but the Bible talks to us about the priesthood of all believers. We're all able to carry the story. We're all able to sing the praises. We're all able to go out and tell people about what God does. Yeah. So whenever you believe in Jesus, then you... When the, as the Holy Spirit enables you to do it, you are part of the priesthood for God. And you are part of the priesthood for God. And you are part of the priesthood for God. And Abel, yo, come here. Sometimes God has to chase people down. But you are in the priesthood for God. And you, and you, and you. And you. Everybody is part of the priesthood. And they, we, carry, we sing the praises of God. We come and we tell other people the stories of what God is doing in our life. And we can also do things like pray for other people and make intercession for other people. That's praying for other people. And you pray for other people too. It talks about the priesthood of all believers. So, yes, this was a gift. And yes, this reminds me that I'm a servant and I serve others. But it's also, it's also that work is not just reserved for me, but it's for all of us who believe and follow Jesus Christ, all right? So let's bow our heads together and let's pray together. God, thank you that we are all part of the priesthood as we're adopted through Jesus Christ. And you give us the works to do 
to go and intercede for others, to go and, and oh, tell the stories, sing the praises, that others might be drawn closer to you and be introduced to you. Thank you that we're your ambassadors, no matter how old or how young we are. Amen. All right, and you guys can head off to Kiddos Church. As we prepare to worship by our giving, just a few announcements to lift up. Um, one is to say that we are, we are collecting items for uh, like a small food pantry to give items out. Thank you for those that have, have given already. Uh, we do have enough to set somebody up for about a week at this point if they come by. So uh, we, we're ready for the next person that comes by to visit us on that. And then if we have a, a lot of stuff that we can't keep up with, then we will pass it on to the other feeding agencies that are in town because we don't want it to sit here and expire or whatever. We'll pass it along and we'll just kind of flow through into the other places. But we wanted to make sure that we had something here uh, because we have had people stop by and we've emptied out our refrigerator for them. So uh, we wanted to make sure that we keep those things coming in. Um, we are open for prayer on Wednesday, 6.30 to 7.30. It's just an open time to come in and take some time to get out of the noise and connect with God. Youth will meet their usual time. And then also, um, we're looking for third space facilitators. And what do I mean by a third space facilitator? Last week I talked about it a little bit, but in, in having discussion groups outside of the church building, in places where people who wouldn't think of church or want to connect with church might gather and just have a discussion group. So we could talk about things that are, are you know, political topics, and that should be a good heated discussion, or things that are life issues or things like that, but things that people gather around and talk about, and then we start to, to bring in scripture with that. And so it can be any time, any day of the week, any time, and pretty much any place where people would gather, but if you uh, feel God nudging you on that, like, yeah, I want to try that, and we could try something at the college, we could try something at a pizza place or a fast food place or a coffee house or something like that, um, is I'm not, you don't need to go do it by yourself unless you'd like to, um, but I'm willing to come alongside and we sit together and as, if we can gather a group of people around who aren't really connected with the church, um, and maybe even church is a bad word for them, but we'd be able to start with a discussion on common ground and see what we have in common and then see where, if that moves into the next discussion and the next discussion over a period of weeks. Uh, so if that's something that, uh, you know, pray about it, think about it, anyone can do it. Um, and. That's one of our movements that we're moving into as far as um, in having a better community engagement uh, going forward. All right. uh, but let's, that's it for my announcements on this, so let's worship now by the giving of our offerings. I've got to tell you, um, based on what you were saying about last week, um, I actually got a chance to put this into practice this week, and I wasn't going to bring it up, but it just kind of fell into my lap, and I didn't ask for it. But... As, as you guys don't know, but my wife and I got a new puppy a week ago, a little female Rottweiler, and um, just cute as all dickens. And so we went to Publix, and I, she went in, and I sat out there in front of Publix with the puppy, and um, a couple people came by, oh, how cute, you know? And this one guy comes by, and he asked if he could pet her, and I said, sure. And um, he said he was on his way to Bible study, which, okay, great. I said, what church do you go to? Just at, he goes, I don't. I said, okay, but you're going to Bible study. He said, yeah. He said, we're going over to somebody's house. He said, I'm not real comfortable going to somebody's house, but he says, I am. And um, I said, so why don't you meet at the church? He goes, well, I don't have a church. He's mad at the church. He got, he got wronged by the church somehow. And um, so at the end of the conversation, we didn't pray or anything, but we had a really nice discussion. And um, I said, you know, just give this a thought. I said, for the people that, that made you feel the way you do about the church, you can, you know, getting mad isn't gonna do you any good. I said, but it's really hard to, it's really hard to for somebody to be mad at you when you love them, you know? And he kind of looked at me, he was like, huh? I said, just think about it. It's just a different way to look at your life. People, people are gonna have a hard time being mad at you if you love them. And I kind of, 
I kind of let that percolate throughout the week. I wasn't going to say anything about it, but um, since you brought it up and it just it just flowed, so there's my there's my story for the week. So anyway, <laughs> Sherry's going to do one for you called "I Am Not Alone." You will go before 
Holy and Almighty God, we thank you that we are not alone. We thank you that you are with us in every high moment and every low. We thank you that you are with us in every blessing and every trial. God, we thank you that you are with us and we are not alone. Lord, you're with us in the eye of the storm. You're with us when all is calm. Lord, we thank you for the times that you speak to the waves and you say, peace, be still. Lord, we thank you that even when it seems like the boat is going to be swamped, you're still with us. And we cry out, Lord, save us. And you're like, I'm here with you. And I'll bring you safely to the other side. So, Lord, for all these things that we are so thankful for, we take a moment and we lift our hearts before you. And, God, we ask that your very spirit would intercede on our behalf as we lift our words to you. Because our words are not enough to express to you all that is moving inside of us in, in the praises and the thanks that we have for your goodness and for your provision and for your guidance and your protection and all the ways that you've been with us through a week that has had so many highs, so many lows, so many challenges and so many wonderful things. And so we in this space take a moment to lift our hearts to you, trusting your spirit to intercede on our behalf. Father, even as we say thank you and praise you, Lord, there are those that are upon our hearts that have needs. They're still in their storm. Lord, they need healing now. They need provision now. They need direction and guidance and discernment now. They need to know that you're with them. They need hope now when everything looks dark. They need, some, they need to know that they're not alone. And Lord, we thank you that you put us in this place in their life where we can actually name them before you and intercede on their behalf and bring them before you and lay them in your arms. And so, Lord, in this space, we do that now. And we thank you that you hear us. Lord, there are those that have heard the name Jesus, but they're not really sure whether Jesus saves. There are those who have heard the name Jesus and they're not really sure whether Jesus is the Son of God or not or, or, or if this is the right way to go. And they, want, they don't want to make an error. They don't want to make a false step, but they're wondering. And, they, and as they sit here and wonder this, Lord, we ask that you would come before them and that as they would feel again your Son knocking on the door of their life, your Son knocking on the door of their heart. And this time they would open the door and allow Christ to come in and be with them. Lord, for those that we know who need Jesus in their life as their Savior and as their companion, Lord, we lift them before you now. Thank you for hearing our prayers. And, our, and this church gathered with all the churches around this United States of America, gathered around all the other countries of the world, the islands of the world, the nations of the world. Lord, we put our voices together in prayer, asking that peace with justice would come upon the world. Lord, that wars would come to an end. Lord, that salvation would be known around the globe, that, so, that, that your spirit would sweep around the world and people would bend their knee to you and they would look up to you and, and declare you as Lord. Lord, we pray that there would be an end to the famine. There would be an end to the pestilence that goes around this world. Lord, that, that people would humble themselves and pray. And Lord, that you would turn and heal their land. Heal our land. Heal not only the land of the United States of America, but the land of the islands, the land of the nations all around the world. Lord, let your healing flow. Lord, we ask that revival would breathe across your church. Lord, we ask for protection where your church is persecuted. Lord, where your church is lukewarm, we pray that you would breathe upon them and make them hot again for you, that they would go out and share with, with respect and with love the hope that they have inside of them. And Lord, where we are to play that role in our community, show us, guide us, inspire us, guide us, Lord, and, and equip us to do this. And as you do it, Lord, may we not walk out with a spirit of fear, but Lord, you give us not that spirit, but a spirit of sound mind, of boldness and that we would go with that in a spirit of love to embrace those that you've created around us and that you love. Lord, give us the eyes to see the way you see. Give us the hearts to love the way you love, the hands to serve the way you serve. Lord, and the feet to go where you go. Thank you that you're here with us now. Just open our ears to understand your movement among us. 
as we look into your word. It's through your son, Jesus Christ, that we pray and we worship. Amen. So we continue, are continuing on our series that we have. We started last week about uh, the priesthood of all believers. It started with, this, with Pentecost Sunday last week about how Jesus' has promised, Jesus has promised to send the Holy Spirit upon His disciples was kept. Jesus kept it. He sent it upon them at that point in time at a festival called Pentecost. They went out. The church went out. They went outside. They started declaring the wonders of the Lord. They started declaring the message of Jesus Christ. People were going, what's happening with this? Because we're hearing it in our own language. And then they, Peter took that opportunity, as, even as they heckled them, he took that opportunity to launch into a message to talk to the people about this Christ that you crucified is actually the Lord and Savior, the promised one. And the Holy Spirit cut the people to the heart as they were listening, and they were brought to a state of repentance, and they said, well, Lord, what are we to do? Peter, what are we to do? And they said, Peter said to them, you are, repent, receive Jesus Christ. And as they did that, the church was born with thousands at a time. Now we're continuing on in this as far as God equipping us as being, for us to be able to go out and be able to share the message. And so this is the next part of this series about you are, you are chosen, you're a royal priesthood, the priesthood of believers. And we'll be looking at 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. But before we get there, i got a question for you. And this is one that so many people, I think, ask, and maybe, or maybe they're just, they don't really ask it. They just kind of go on a search. But the question is, do you know who you are? I mean, how many people go on a quest to try to figure out who they are, right? Uh, there's quests for all different kinds of things. Occasionally, I watch movies about quests. Um, I go back to some of the same ones sometimes. This, this last week, I had to go back to another quest, the quest for the Holy Grail. I just needed something a little bit lighter to look at for a little while. So that helped uh, fill that, that need for a little bit. But people, are, every, we're on a quest to figure out who we are and do we really know who we are. And so many are searching for the answers and our culture is very, very adapt to trying to fill in the blanks as people go looking for who they are. And the question is, by, is asked by those who follow Jesus and it's asked by those who don't follow Jesus. We're, we're, we're united in this to figure this out. And the author of 1 Peter writes to those in the church and is addressing this question as we look at this passage today as far as, far as helping them fill in the blanks about do you know who you are? Even in the culture that was there was trying to say, here's what you are, here's what you are. You, you get, you know, label yourself by the things that you do. Label yourself by your sexuality. Label yourself by the, the occupation that you have. Label yourself by where your position is in the family. Label yourself by, we have all these different things that we try to fill it in. And Peter, the author of Peter is trying to get past all this, even in his own culture, to have them say, take a look at this, it's something deeper about who you are for those of you that have come to Christ. And so he, we kind of come into the middle of what he's moving here. We're actually going to kind of do this in a, in a reverse order. Next week, is for, we're going to the first chapter. But this week, we're kind of jumping into the middle of everything with all this for 1 Peter chapter 2, starting at verse 1. There's a therefore in there, which means there's all kinds of before stuff. And we're going to go to the before stuff next week. But if you want to know the before stuff, go to 1 Peter chapter 1 and you'll hear the before. All right, and then you'll be up to speed for next week. I won't need to do it. You can be the priesthood of believers, and I'll sit out there, and you can talk to me. All right. But therefore, rid yourself of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to Him, the living stone rejected by human beings, but chosen by God and precious to Him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in Him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe... And he quotes, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And he quotes again, a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. 
So in this, if we go into the, the D4 part at the beginning, he starts giving rules for holy living in here. Since, you're, since you have been called out of this, since you're in this new, this, this new personhood, since you're in this place, now get rid of these things that used to be in your life and work on that. And this is one of the things that the Holy Spirit always works in us through conviction and confession, and we're constantly growing in our sanctification as that gets, as we work on those things. And it seems like you know, we get one thing done, and then God brings up something else. And we get something else done, and, but that's the process that happens. It will never be completely perfect until we see Christ face to face. But we start that journey. But as we start that journey, now we come into this, idea, this part, though. You are a, a, a chosen people, a royal priesthood. Now, sometimes we say, well, I don't know if I could do the role of being a priest. I don't know if I could do the role of representing Christ. I don't know if I can go out and, and, and be this. And this is an awfully heavy burden for God to lay on me. But, you know, it's, it's such a precious thing, and it's such an amazing thing, and it's such a calling. And you can do it within your own context of what, of what you're in. But sometimes if you start to step into that, what might happen is, wait, I'm not worthy for this. I've got this, I got malice and envy, and I have all these other things that are going on inside of me, and I can't do this. But you know, the priests had all that going on inside of them, too. See, they had to come before God, and, they, and God, God made, they, they had to, act, to lay out their own sins. They had to confess, and God, God worked in them and gave them His Spirit in order for them to be able to do the work that He was calling them to do, to be the priesthood. This, we sang about it in one of our songs here about take a coal from the altar, touch my lips, here I am, cleanse me with this. This is one of the things that anytime God came and brought a revelation to somebody throughout the scriptures, like, wait, I'm a man of unclean lips. Uh, what? It, whenever we come before the presence of a holy God, all of a sudden, all of our mess just stands up in bold contrast against the holiness of God. And I'm like, and I'm supposed to be part of a royal priesthood and a chosen people? But when, we, when, when the people in scriptures confessed it, and when we confess it, what happens? What's the answer all through scripture from the Old Testament going forward? It's like, I'll take care of this. An angel takes a, a coal from the altar and touches the prophet and says, your sin's been atoned for. Christ dies on the cross and the blood is shed on the cross and that blood has washed us clean and your sin is atoned for. So yes, we are a priesthood of believers. You're called, you are, you, you are so precious. The, the author of the universe, the creator of the universe knows you by name and calls you to be part of the priesthood to go and share the wonders of God with others and to go and bring it to them and to share the story. And your story is unique. Your story is different than my story. And, and it's like that on purpose because we need a myriad of stories and a variety of stories to connect with a variety of people that God is reaching out to try to save. And your story is redeemed by Christ. Your story is redeemed by the work of God so that you can bring your story alongside of the people he brings next to you. And whenever you find a connection in the story, then you can share the wonders and the wonderful things of God with them. And you're fulfilling the role of the priesthood with them. And whenever you feel that conviction inside, it's not condemnation, it's conviction. There's always, I think, I think our generation that's currently out here, we need to hear the difference between condemnation and conviction. I think sometimes when the Holy Spirit convicts, they, they start to, to feel kind of condemnation, like God's condemning me, but God's not condemning, God's convicting. Now, what do you do with conviction? You bring it before God, you confess it, and you ask for forgiveness, you receive that forgiveness, and you walk new and fresh with him and it's his mercies are renewed over and over and over and you can come before him over and over and over again to receive what you need and the holy spirit does that for the believers for us to be able to do that so rather than running from god when we feel conviction because we think it's condemnation we take that before him and we confess it before him and then it's removed and it's removed out of our relationship with others. It's removed out of our relationship with God and we have that closeness and that renewed power and that uh, forgiveness where we, we've grieved the Holy Spirit, the renewal of the Holy Spirit in us to be able to do the work he's called us to do. And this is an ongoing process. Even for the priest, it's an ongoing process. So the priesthood of all believers, this is what we do as we go to, to out there. But you, if we're asking who we are, who we are, sometimes the answer gets, oh, wait, where we started here. Um, I'm someone that is full of des deceit, hypocrisy, envy. I've, I've got all this stuff inside of me, so I'm, I'm, that, I'm that person. Now, this is stuff that's in our life. You're not that person. 
You're someone who's uniquely created by God, known by God. As the psalmist tells us, God knit you together in your mother's womb. He, he put you together piece by piece. He knows everything about you. He knows you by name before you even came into the world. And he loves you dearly. He loves you to the point that he, his own son went to the cross in order to save you. That's how loved you are. And God, the one true supreme being of the entire universe who created the entire universe, knows you and calls you to be his ambassador. And that is who you are. You are Christ's creation. You are a new creation in Christ. You are made by God. You are called to be in the, the, the priesthood. You are called to be someone who actually shares the wonders of God, declares his glory, declares his praises, and the other parts of what would be the priesthood. What is it that a priest does? Back in the olden days, they made lots of barbecue. <laughs> I mean, you read through it, you go, wow. Or they, were, they, they, they did a lot of boiling of meat, too, you know. But it was always like laying out and all this. And God likes a good barbecue. I mean, <laughs> grain offerings, fat offerings. Go out to your grill and lay out some fat and some grain and see how that waves up into the air, you know. It's like, it smells good. I know. <laughs> That's right. But then... There, it was intercession was part of it. Tell, telling the stories of God, teaching, but also interceding for the people. After they would make atonement for themselves, after they would come before God for cleansing of themselves and where they were, then it was to represent the people and to bring them in. And then to intercede for the nation. This is the same thing we're called to do. So we have someone in our family who is having a hard time and they're, and, they're, and they're having a hard time with the church, they're having a hard time in their relationship with God. We are called as a royal priesthood then to make intercession for them. Anybody that we go around, man, they really need Jesus. Whether you're saying it in road rage or whether you're saying it with a heartbreak, that's a call to intercession. And you lift them before God and you're doing the work of the priesthood as you intercede for them. What else is in the work of this? It's sharing the story of God with others, which I've talked several times. You, you, you forth tell what he's doing, but you also recall history. Because sometimes we wonder where God's at work. Sometimes we, get, we don't know where God is and what he's doing. And sometimes things are really bleak around us. Sometimes. I don't know. It's, sometimes it could be now times, depending on where we are. But if we can recall the goodness of God, if we can recall with people when we sit down and have conversations or as we, they're looking at our puppy in our lap or as we're sitting at coffee with somebody or as we're sitting at a break room with someone or we're just having a random conversation somewhere and they go, I wonder where God is. If we recall the times where, as we've read the scriptures and we study, there's times when people have gone through dry spells and it's like the psalmist cries out, where are you? Where, you've rejected us and then yet I'll remember this, the goodness of the times that you've been and the times that you've come and, and I'll recall the days that you came through and here and here and I will wait for you to come over here. We can share this and then it, for people, to, it can bring hope to people. We, t we tell what God has done. We can tell what God has done in our own lives and we can forth tell, we can tell what's coming we can tell that there's, there's going to be a time when peace with justice will come across the entire globe when Christ returns. We, might, we may not see it, we probably won't see it until that day comes, but that day is coming. And we can share it. It may not be in our lifetime. Everybody thinks that Christ is coming back in their lifetime. Generally, it's always like things are so bad, they're going, he's going to come back, he's going to come back. You, we will all meet Christ face to face, whether it's when we breathe our last or when he comes back. But even then, we can foretell that the trials we're going through and the brokenness that we have, there will be peace when we see him face to face, whether it's at the end of this life or when he comes back again. Sometimes the good news is difficult for places where it's a rich nation. But sometimes we have to get outside of our richness and, and outside of our blessings that we have and we've been so covered with and get down to where people are living day to day and they have stories of how God has provided for them one day to the next, one day to the next, one day to the next, and to really see the works of God. Or get to where a church is persecuted for, for what they present and yet their pastors and their, the folks that they still lead and the church folks still go out and do Bible studies and they still tell other people about Jesus not knowing whether they're talking to someone who's in the secret police or whether they're talking to someone who just needs hope. And they don't know what the result will be after they share the message of Jesus with them. But they still go forward with that boldness, knowing whether it puts me in jail, maybe this policeman still needs to hear about Jesus and they'll convert them and change their life and they'll connect with Christ and they'll be someone different than who they are. And there's lots of stories of that. 
but at what a cost. But they say it's not worth, it's worth the cost that someone might know Jesus in the context of this life, not just in the life to come. And so they don't hide behind the walls. They don't hide behind the, the buildings and the trappings. They get out and get involved and get engaged. That's part of what being a priesthood of believers is all about. We share the story of God with others, and we represent God in the community. We represent God by the things that we say, but, you know, we, we say so much by what we do. One of the biggest things that we'll run into as we go out and, and use words to speak is like, well, I get rebutted by, but this person did this, or this, this did that, or this church did this, or this, and it's what they did versus what they said. It's very important as we go out to as the royal priesthood to be, as we're ambassadors, we watch what our actions do, and we ask that the Holy Spirit always guide our actions. You know, it's, I think of a, of a, I don't know if I ever saw this or not, but it, it be, just became an interesting anecdote that put flashing into my head. It's like someone driving down the road with God as my co-pilot, as a sticker in the front, and the ichthus fish on the back, and all these other things, and someone cuts them off, and they give them the finger out the window. All right, no, I'm pointing to God. I'm praying. I'm pointing to God on the way. And I'm just letting you know, I'm lifting you up to God right now, but only with one part of my hand, not the whole. <laughs> hand to praise is like this. No, I can't again. <laughs> so we declare the praises of God. We intercede for individuals, community, and nation. We share the story of God with others, and we represent God in the community. So who are you? Who are you? You are chosen. You're chosen. Now, whether you believe in Jesus or not, you're chosen. But here's what happens. When you get chosen and you don't believe in Jesus, you trip all the time. That cornerstone becomes a stumbling block, and you fall over it, and you fall over it. And you go, why do I keep tripping and, fall, tripping and falling over it? Eh, Joe, I don't know about you. You believe in Jesus, and you still fall. I, I'll go pray extra for you. <laughs> but you trip over it, and you say, well, what do you mean by this? Well, Paul, who wrote all these letters to the churches, Paul felt that he was following God and what God was supposed to do whenever he went out and started persecuting the church because he's like, wait, this is heresy, this idea that Jesus is Messiah. And he goes out and he's tripping and falling over this until Jesus actually stands before him and tells him what he's doing. And he's like, wait, and he repents of his own ideology and his own ideas. And he says, wait a second, I met Jesus and Jesus says this, so let me do this. Peter had a situation where he kind of had some things going on, like, well, we don't eat this, we don't do this, we don't do that. And then he has a vision. It's like, go to the Gentiles. Go to the one that's about to knock on your door and share Christ with them. He does. The Holy Spirit comes upon that whole group. He goes, wait a second. Wow, this is a sign to me that God's working outside of my realm of influence where I thought God would work. And so it goes. So if you can even, if, you, if you're not a believer in Jesus, you're still chosen, but you wonder why you keep tripping over stuff and tripping over stuff and tripping over stuff. And it's because God's trying to get your attention. And say, take the time to turn to Jesus. Take the time to receive him. This is, he's, having a relationship with Jesus is a better way to do life now. Not just a ticket to eternity. It's a better way to do life now. But you, who are you? You are chosen. And as those of you that are, have a relationship with Christ, you're a royal priesthood. And whenever you receive Christ, you, bring, you get brought into that priesthood. You get brought into that. And you're, who are you? You're representatives of God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Who are you? You are counseled, you are comforted, and empowered by God's own Spirit, the Holy Spirit. You, think of that. Think of that gift. You're trusted that much. You are of that much value and of that much worth that God pours out His own Spirit upon you to be with you as your counselor, your comforter, and the one who empowers you to, to be the witness to your family to be the witness to your workspace, to be the witness to the environments that he puts you in. Who are you? You're dearly loved. You're dearly loved by the supreme power in the universe. Who are you? You're a child of God adopted through Jesus Christ. And if you haven't let God adopt you, see, God wants to do it. The only person who's keeping the adoption from happening is you. If you haven't let God adopt you, you keep saying, no, no, no. You, you hear the offer, and if you're listening to this now, you know God wants to adopt you through Jesus Christ. You know that he wants you in the family. You know that he's sitting there knocking at the door of your heart and your life and saying, come on in. You know you've been tripping over it, and you're going to sit here and say, well, I'm going to put it off for a little while, and you're going to trip some more. Just telling you now. But God wants to adopt you, so if you haven't let him adopt you, now is the time. Now is the time. God wants you in the family. 
God wants you in the family. So stop tripping over the message of God's love for you. You know, who are you? Sometimes the answer gets, kind of goes along, who are you? I am unlovable. I am broken. I am damaged goods. I am. It needs to be countered with the truth. Who are you? Chosen, counseled, comforted, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Dearly loved by the supreme power in the universe, God himself. A child of God adapted, adopted through Jesus Christ, pursued by God, loved by God. A new creation in Christ. God wants you. God wants you. Let God embrace you. Let God bring you into the family. He's not going to stop following you. He's not going to stop knocking. He's going to keep reaching out. But we don't know how many days we have. Don't put off till tomorrow what you could do today. Receive Jesus Christ today, now. Open the door of your heart. And that's where the adventure and the journey starts. He takes you just the way you are. And we go forward from there. Let's pray. Holy and almighty God, thank you that you love us so much. Thank you that, we are, that you chose us. Lord, that through, through your son Jesus and through the, the power of your spirit, we're a royal priesthood to go out and share the message with others. Go, thank you that we are representatives of you. God, thank you that even though we're not perfect, you take that, Christ handled that on the cross. The Holy Spirit handles that through the process of us confessing and being cleansed and then being empowered to go out and do the work you've called us to do and to be the people you've called us to be. Lord, thank you for that. Lord, thank you that you want to adopt every single person into your family and that you provided the way through your son Christ, Jesus. Lord, for those that have not yet, and they keep tripping over it, they keep hearing it, they keep putting it off, they keep wondering. If that's you, today, let it be the day that you open the door of your heart. Open the door of your heart and your life, and Christ will come in and sit with you, and the two of you can have coffee together, the two of you can talk about everything in your life together, and you don't have to hold anything back. He already knows. You can talk to him about all your disappointments, all your hurts, all the hypocrisy you've seen around you, all the things that enrage you, all the things that make you happy, all the places where you're broken, all the places where you've been disappointed, all the places where you have hope upon hope. You can be you. Because you are a child of God, created by God to do good works and to be his representative in the world. Start that journey today. God, thank you for your spirit with us. And as we prepare to leave this place, renew in us the ability to be responsive to your spirit. Lord, if there's things that we have done or left undone that have grieved your spirit, and we're here in this space and, we're, and it's coming before us as you convict us of it, Lord, we confess it before you. And Lord, we ask your forgiveness. And Lord, we thank you for your mercy and your grace equal to every need. And we thank you that as far as the east is from the west, so far you've removed our transgressions and our sins from us. And Lord, we ask that you would renew a full measure of your Holy Spirit in us. Fill us again from head to toe. Lord, where the coal in our heart has started to wane and ash over, breathe upon it, that it would kindle anew the fire and the passion of you burning inside of us. That we would love others the way that we have been loved by you. Thank you for you, almighty God, and your son, Jesus Christ, and your spirit with us. Amen. Well, I invite you to worship with us as we sing our closing songs together. Oh
service this morning with a song called Jesus Messiah and uh, I'll tell you if you uh, if you don't know Jesus take this opportunity like Mark said he's standing at the door right now knocking on the door waiting um, you know you want to you know you need something in your life and if you'll just give him that half a chance he'll show you what he is he'll show you what he can be and um, he'll show you what you can be what you were chosen to be. And so we're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate this next song called Jesus Messiah. And just think about, think about this. If you're online and you need Jesus Christ in your life, take the time right now during this song. Just open up your heart and say, Jesus, I know I screwed up. I've done some things that I'm pretty ashamed of. My heart's black. 
My feet stink. I just, I don't, I don't feel like I belong in church. My neighbor's mad at me. They're doggone and I need something. So I'll, here's my last shot. Come into my heart and let me know, let me know what, what you've chosen me to be. He became a sin who knew no sin. That's the first line to the song. That we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and he carried the cross. And that was love so amazing. He humbled himself, carried the cross. Love so amazing, love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. Jesus, my son. 
in this place. We thank you for your love and your grace. We thank you for rescuing us and for being there for us when we call out to you. Pray for each person who's not yet called out to you, that they'll feel pulled, they'll feel compelled, and they'll reach for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray these things. Amen. On a holy 